Hi everybody, welcome back to the Butterfly House Pollinator Week series. Today, we're going to be talking about moths, the butterfly's nighttime cousins. Did you know that in terms of number of species, the moths outnumber the butterflies by many, many times? There's only, I say only, about 18,000 species of butterflies, but there's over 150,000 known species of moths. With so many out there, they must be doing important things in our ecology. So let's learn about some of them. Here are some of the more fantastic moths in the world. Some of the giant silkworm moths. Here at the top, we have several that can be found in Missouri. The Cecropia moth, the Luna moth, Io moth, the Imperial moth, the Honey Locust moth, and the Promethea moth. There are many others besides that fall into the category of giant silkworm moths. And here are two from foreign lands that could be found here at the Butterfly House, the fabulous Atlas moth and the Madagascar moon moth, the more tropical relative of our local Luna moth. These are fantastic animals to be sure. The really crazy thing about them is that adult moths, moths in this family, don't feed. So of all the moths that we're going to talk about, these are not important pollinators, but moths as a group are incredibly important pollinators that pollinate a vast array of flowers, especially those that bloom in the nighttime, as we'll see in just a second. Let me introduce you to a moth that is a very important pollinator. This is an example of a hawk moth also called a sphinx moth. Some of the ones that have clear wings are sometimes called bumblebee moths, and sometimes they're also called hummingbird moths because of the way they fly in front of flowers, much like a hummingbird feeding. What you want to notice about this moth should be pretty obvious, but that's its very long proboscis that is uncurled in front of it. Now, this was uncurled by the person who mounted this moth, when the moth is alive, it does keep it curled up under its head where it can fly around with it safely. And then it uncurls that when it's at a flower that it needs to feed on nectar from. The proboscis here is the secret to the hawk moth's success as a pollinator. There are flowers out in the world that can only be fed upon by hawk moths. In fact, there's a very famous story of the naturalist Charles Darwin, famous for his theory of evolution by natural selection, who on his travels around the world encountered an orchid with an incredibly long flower tube. Darwin mused to himself that somewhere there must be a pollinator with a long tongue able to access the nectar of that flower. That pollinator was not found during that voyage and was not found by Darwin, but years later, it was discovered, and it was found to be a hawk moth. Here is a picture of that moth pollinating that flower. And you can see that long proboscis uncurled and springing into action to access the nectar down in that flower. There are many, many other examples of moths having special relationships with flowers like this around the world. And in many cases, the flowers that have these crazy shapes can only be pollinated by their moth pollinator. If the moth pollinator were to vanish, the flower would likely vanish too because it cannot be pollinated. Besides these specialist relationships though, there are thousands of night blooming flowers that are pollinated by moths. If you ever take a walk after dark, take a flashlight, shine it on flowers, and I bet you will see moths, not to mention other pollinators, visiting them as well. Since the moths outnumber the butterflies so many times over, there's a good bet that there are more significant pollinators than butterflies. In fact, we're only just beginning to discover the vast amount of pollinating services that they do. So I think my friend Adele, who's working the camera for us, has a few questions for us. What did you want to know, Adele? Sure. My first question is, what are the benefits of pollination at night, since a lot of moths do pollinate at night. So the main reason most moths are nocturnal, just like many nocturnal animals, is you can avoid daytime predators. 
Have you ever noticed that most moths are kind of drab colored and not bright colored like the butterflies? There are a few exceptions to that, but most brightly colored moths actually fly during the day. If you're out at night, even though there's moonlight, even though there's starlight, that's not really enough to light up colors and to make them visible. There's no reason to have color. In fact, it's better to be drab colors and hide. So they gain advantage from all that. And they can fly around, they can find a mate, they can do their pollination services and be perfectly safe from most predators. Cool. My second and final question is, why do moths um, gather around lights around our house? Why are they attracted to light? Sure. So this is something we've all noticed. Moths basically get confused by our porch light. We just talked about how they are nocturnal. And at night, at least before humans came along with artificial lights, the only lights that were present were the stars, but much more importantly, the moon. Many moths navigate by the moonlight. Well, the moon's way up in the sky. So as they're following along, they can always keep the moon in front of them or beside them or wherever they need it to be. But if they're traveling by your porch light, they adjust their course when they don't need to because the light seems to change distance relative to them. And they try to move to keep it on the same side of them and they end up kind of spiraling up to it. Basically, it throws off their sense of navigation, confuses them a lot, and they end up at the light, just fluttering around. Wow. Well, thank you for answering my questions. You're very welcome. If you all have any more questions, please put them in the comments down below or just send us a message here at the Butterfly House and we'll be happy to answer them. Tune in tomorrow as we continue our exploration of the world's pollinators with a look at flies as pollinators. It's going to be fascinating. Thanks for watching.